what we're going to do next is we're going to open up the character blueprint and this is going to define actually filling up and emptying the detection meter so let's go into our character blueprint which for me is first person blueprints bp first person character and then what we want to do first is we want to actually create the widget and put it on screen so we're going to go to event begin play first to do that so what i'm going to do is out of the end of my code i'm going to create widget like so with the class is going to be my w underscore detection meter the widget we created earlier right click the return value and promote it to a variable naming this detection meter widget for example and then out of this we're going to very simply add to viewport so now when the player starts playing the game it's going to put the widget on screen now by default we have hidden the progress bar so they're not going to see anything but it is there so we can then set the visibility of the progress bar to either be visible or hidden depending on if the AI can see the player. We'll compile and save that. Next, what we're going to do is go to class settings and add the interface the same way we did on the AI. And then again, go to our interfaces. And this time we're going to get the start detection and stop detection events, as you see here. And I'm just gonna move these over here into some nice empty space and move the stop detection down just so we have a little bit more room here to start with. Then what we're going to do is get the detection meter widget, drag out of this, and we're going to get the progress bar. If you gave it a specific name, then get that, obviously, but I just left it as progress bar 48. And then out of this, we're very simply just going to set visibility like so. And we're going to connect that into there like this, setting it to visible. So this way, it's now going to show when the AI starts detecting, because we're only going to call this when we do want to start detecting. Then after this, we're going to add timeline, and I'm just going to name this one fill detection meter, opening it up straight away by double clicking on it. We're going to add a track, add a float track, and I'm going to name this one fill icon, and set the length to whatever you want. So I'm going to set mine to be three seconds. This is how long it's going to take to fill up the meter. Now I want it to be three seconds. But again, you can put it to whatever you want. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, any number you want. In here, we're going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value of zero. Then right click, add key to curve float with a time of the length of your timeline, which for me is three, and a value of one. So we're going from the start to the end of the timeline, like this. We'll go back to the event graph, and you can see we now have this float track here. This is basically just going to be the percentage of the progress bar. So to fill that up, what we can do is get the progress bar here, come out of it, and then simply set percent like so. Connecting that onto update, and then the float is going to be the fill icon float track perfectly there like so. And then we're going to double click this to get some root nodes just to keep it looking nice and organized like this. And that is now we're going to fill up the meter. So if we were to hit play, walk in front of the AI, it's going to fill up. However, it's not going to stop and it won't empty. So we can do that very easily. We can get our stop chase event here. Then we want to get a reference to our timeline. So under the variables tab, we have components. We get the fill detection meter, which is the name of our timeline. Out of this, we simply just get stop to stop the timeline from filling up. And then we go into reverse. So it's gonna stop it filling and then reverse. So it's gonna empty it. Now if we to hit play, we can see that it is going to do that perfectly. It's gonna fill and then empty when we are in sight and not in sight of the AI. But we also want this to now work to chase us because when it fills up, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna start chasing us. It will just stay as it is like so. So we can do this very easily. We're gonna come out of direction of the timeline and get a switch on E timeline direction, connecting that into finished of the timeline. If we're going forward, we want to start the chase because we're filling it. If we're going backwards, we're, we're emptying it so we want to take it off screen and stop the chase if it was already chasing us. So we're going to get a reference to the AI from the event and then simply start chase with a message there, connecting that into forward of the switch. And that's all we need to do for going forwards. Once we have finished the timeline, so the meter is filled up, it's going to simply just start chasing. And then on backward, what we want to do is then stop the chase. However, we want to do something first. We want to get a re-triggerable delay, once again, setting this to 0.5 seconds, for example. Now you don't need this, but this essentially means 
0.5 seconds after it is emptied, it will be taken off screen because this just looks a little bit nicer than immediately removing it. Then after this, we want to remove it off screen. So we want to come out of the progress bar here and then set visibility. And we're going to set this to be hidden, like so. And again, I'm just going to double click this to get some root nodes. And then finally, last but not least, we just want to stop the chase. So we can come out of the AI reference again, the same on going into start chase, and just do stop chase message, like so. Connecting that in, like this. And now, this should be working perfectly for us. So what you should see is that it's going to fill up and empty, and when it does fill up, it's going to start chasing us. And then if we can get away from it, it's going to empty and then stop chasing us which we should hopefully see, but I might not be able to get away from it. As we can see there, it emptied and stopped chasing us. And now if I go back in front of it, it will do the whole thing again. It's going to start filling up. And then if I'm out of sight, it will stop. And then once it fills all the way up, it will start chasing us perfectly like so. And now the next step is going to be to get this to actually face where the AI is, because it's just pointing forwards no matter where we are looking. So we want it to point towards the AI at all times so we know which one is detecting us. This is very, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to go back into our widget blueprint. So for me, that's W underscore detection meter. And we're going to go straight to the event graph. We can delete event pre-construct and event construct as we just need event tick. We're going to add a variable naming this AI. And we're going to set this to be a character object reference. As mentioned previously, that is just because my AI is a character. If yours is a pawn, for example, then set this to a pawn object reference. We're going to drag and drop and get this here. Then we're going to right click and convert to validated get, connecting that into event tick. We are then going to get the progress bar and out of this set the render transform angle. That is basically just setting the rotation of the progress bar. Now we want to do a little bit of maths to figure out the angle. So again, we want to figure out the angle to point towards where the AI is relative to where the player is looking. So this is actually a lot more simple than you may expect. We're going to firstly right click and get player character. Then out of this, we're going to get actor location. So just where the player currently is. Then we're going to get a reference to the AI and then also get actor location. So where is the player and where is the AI? Then coming out of the get actor location for the player, we're going to find look at rotation. That one is going to be start and the target is going to be the AI location. So now we have the look at rotation from the player to the AI, but there's still a little bit more maths. So if we right click the return value, we can split the structure pin. And what we're going to do is right click and get the player character once again. Then out of this, we're going to get control rotation right click the return value and split the structure pin and then we're going to minus the Z from the find look at rotation by the Z from the get player character and essentially what this is doing is it's making sure that this value being outputted here is the rotation between where the player is looking not where the player is facing so as the player looks around to see which enemy is looking at them the meter is also going to follow that so it's not where the player's mesh is facing, it's where the player's camera is facing. So I hope that makes sense. And then very simply, that value is going to go into the angle of the set render transform angle. We can compile and save that, and that's all good to go. All we need to do now is just set up this AI value here. So we can close this and then go back into our player blueprint. So we'll go to first person blueprints, BP first person character, and then in here, we're going to change this code just a little bit. What I'm going to do is move the event start detection out a little bit, and I'll adjust that reroute node with it. Then we're going to get a reference to our detection meter widget, and out of this, just simply set AI. I'll connect that into the event there, like so. And then the AI value itself is going to be the AI from the event start detection. And that's simply all we need to do there. And then to end it, all we're going to do is at the end, after stop chase, we're going to do the same thing, so set it again, but this time we're just going to leave it blank, so we're not going to set it to anything. We'll compile and save, and that should now be working perfectly for us. If we're to hit play, it's going to point perfectly towards the AI, as you can see there, 
the one that's looking at us it's going to point perfectly towards it like so and if it just start chasing us it will still move perfectly towards it so as you can see as it's chasing us it is also facing the right direction the reason it stopped moving there is just because it hit me that's again because i've not set up anything after it does chase me it just stops so you can obviously set that up for yourself if you, well, if you want to attack you or do anything else but as it's chasing me and moving around it's still going to be pointing in the correct direction as you can see perfectly here so i think that'll be it for this for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do what we've done is we've set up the payday 3 detection meter system so as the ai is seeing us it's filling up the bar and as it's not seeing us it's draining again and when it fills up completely so it's completely done seeing us it will start chasing us or whatever it is you want so if you're doing payday 3 it could arrest you it could attack you whatever it is that you want and again for me once it finishes detecting us like that it's just going to stand still until we do the same thing again so if i were to go in front of it again it's going to see us if i were to hide it will go down perfectly like so so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one